In this video today, I'm gonna to be analyzing two pro paddle matches to see what separates the winners from the losers. I wanna find out the most effective paddle shots and which shots lead to the most winners. This video is not based on opinion or my sort of personal advice. It's gonna be purely based on facts and statistics. So by the end of the video, I wanna tell you based on the stats, which shots are the most effective, which shots are gonna give you the most winners and which shots lead to the most misses. I'm gonna be analyzing two matches from last year's World Paddle Championships in Dubai where Spain played Argentina, one from the men's and one from the women's as well. And I think it's gonna be really interesting to see the differences between the two matches, but also just the matches individually to see what shots are the pros playing that are the most effective and what shots are leading to the most mistakes at the highest level. Let's do it. I've got the first match here, which is Spain versus Argentina, which was back in 2022. It was the World Paddle Championships. Um, and basically just gonna tally up every time that there's a winner and which shot it was for, and every time there was an error, so that by the end of it, I'll have all of these stats, what shots all the winners came from, and what shots all the mistakes came from. This is my analysis sheet that I'm gonna be using to sort of track uh, the winners that the pro players are making and also the misses as well. So as you can see for winners, I've got the forehand ground stroke, backhand ground stroke, forehand volley, backhand volley, any shot to the cage, out by four, so like a straight pop out, out by three, kick smash, flat smash, so a smash they just bring it over, Vibora and Bandeka, and then I've got the same for errors as well. Just started i've realized i forgot about uh the bahada and the drop shot also just realized i forgot the lob as well so i've added that one as well okay guys so i've just finished analyzing the two professional matches and i've got some really interesting data we're going to talk mostly about the men's game first so in that game there are a total of 208 points 57% of them were winners and 42% were errors. So overall, in the men's game, they were making more winners than more errors overall when the point ended. If you ever watched a professional men's game before, I think you probably know which shot resulted in the most amount of winners. And that obviously was the smash. So out of all of the winners in the match, 31% of them were the smash. Behind that was 17.5% was the forehand volley. So out of all the winners, 17.5% of them was the forehand volley. And finally, popping it out by four took up 15% of all the winners. That means over 62% of all the winners in the men's professional game come from either the smash, popping it out, or the forehand volley. So very aggressive. I could sort of see as I was watching as well, every point is basically being set up for either a smash or a high ball that they can easily pop out or an aggressive forehand volley. The other shots that were also very high was the Bahada. That was 10.8% of all the winners came from the Bahada. That was another chance obviously for a very aggressive shot to get a winner from. Behind that in fifth place was the backhand volley with 8% of all the winners coming from the backhand volley. So those are your top five shots that result in winners. You've got your smash, popping it out by four, forehand volley, Bahada, and your backhand volley. The one that just missed out was the Vibora in sixth place that had 5% of all the winners coming from the Vibora. We're gonna have a look at the mistakes now in the men's game, and this is really, really interesting. Out of all of the mistakes that were made in the men's professional game, the backhand volley took up 23% of them. So that's nearly one in four mistakes came from a backhand volley. Now, I think this is because the backhand volley often gets targeted a lot because it's not the most effective for a winner as we saw earlier with only 8% of all the winners coming from the backhand volley. However, there's a high chance of a mistake coming th from it as we see here with 23%. So I see the backhand volley is clearly targeted by the professional players. You've also got the forehand volley taking up 11% of all mistakes in the men's game. So for the forehand volley, it takes up 17% of all winners, so very, very high, and only 11% of mistakes, whereas the backhand volley takes up only 8% of all winners, so quite low, but then 23% of mistakes. So you can see why, at a high level, they're constantly targeting the backhand volley and not letting the pros have a forehand volley. A very high one here, 19% of the mistakes came from the forehand ground stroke. So this could be off the wall as well. This is when I think there were a lot of attempts at a Chiquita and that's why I was hitting the net and making a mistake. The lob at 13% of all mistakes, no real surprises here. I mean, the lob is used so much in the game they're gonna sometimes hit it just long. You've also got the Bahada at 12.5% of all the mistakes. All this data from the men's game kind of tells me that the entire game that they play revolves around setting up the point for a smash, 
forehand volley or popping it out by four. It's very different with the women's game. I'm going to show you the data now of how it compares to the men's professional game. So overall in the women's professional match, which again was Spain versus Argentina, there was only two sets, so a lot less points. There was a total of 142 points. 39% of those shots were winners and 61% of those shots were mistakes. So a lot more mistakes in this one. There were three shots in the women's game that were all joint in first for the most effective. And that was the smash, the forehand volley and the backhand volley. Very surprising stuff, all at exactly 19%. So combined, you've got nearly 60% of the shots all from your smash and then forehand and backhand volley. This shows obviously a lot more variety. The smash isn't as dominant in the women's game. You've also then got the bandeja and the bajada at 12.5% of all the winners. So a total of about 20% coming from the bandeca and the bajada. This is why I think sometimes it's better for myself and a lot of you guys watching to watch the women's game because it's a lot more relatable for us. Obviously, we're not going on court and kicking it out from the back of the court every point. 30% of our winners aren't coming just from the smash. So you can see a lot more variety in the women's game because they're winning it with the smash, forehand volley, backhand volley, bandeca and bajada. If we have a look at some of the mistakes now from the women's game, very interestingly, we've got the bandeca at the highest of all the mistakes with 17% of all the mistakes coming from the bandeca. Now, I think this is because the women have to use the bandeca a lot more to try and win the point or go for it a lot more. They're not relying on the smash in the men's game. As you can see, obviously, in the women's, the bandeca takes up 12.5% of all the winners, which means there's a lot of mistakes with that as well. I think in the men's game, the bandeca is purely used just to maintain the net and nothing else, which is why in the men's game, the bandeca only took up 4.5% of all mistakes and two and a half percent of all winners. So it's rarely used in a point that wins. Whereas in the women's game, the bandeca was used a lot more as a winner, but also it had a lot of mistakes with it as well. You then got the backhand ground stroke with 16% of all mistakes. Then you've got the lob with 14% of all mistakes. No real surprises there, lots of lobs. And then you've got your forehand volley and backhand volley equal on 12% of mistakes. So fairly similar to the men's game in terms of the mistakes makes apart from the bandeca, which is the big difference. And this is what I thought going into this with the men's and the women's game. The main difference is with the overhead, with the men often winning just from the smash and not making too many mistakes from it. Whereas the ladies having to use more of a variety and having to force a winner more with their bandeca. So very interesting stuff there and which shots are most effective. The main things that surprised me me a lot were how many mistakes were made on the backhand volley in the men's game and also a big surprise as well in the women's game of how many mistakes there are on a bandeca. By the way, if you fancy any of these rackets behind me, you can check out Everything Paddle, my online paddle store. There's loads of information on that website on all the different rackets, including video reviews, compare paddles feature, a racket quiz, and you can always contact me personally if you've got any questions about the rackets. I'd love to hear your opinion on all of this data, so please leave a comment with what you think about all of this. And if you've got any suggestions on another video idea I've got, then let me know as well.